Welcome everybody, welcome. My name is Rebellions, and it's been like a month and some change since I've been able to actually play this game. Um, so I've updated to uh, 0.755 as uh, uh, one of somebody, as was recommended that I do, first thing that jumps out at me. The main menu's different. Was controls always here, or am I tripping? I don't think this was always here. I feel like that was not always here. Eh. That's kind of neat. Alright. So, uh... Even the coloration on this is different. Neat. All right, we're going to get started. <laughs> okay, I believe I've spoken to Oh, uh, wait, no, I specifically haven't. Did I? I don't remember. It's been a month. No, I did. I did have these conversations, didn't I? Wait a second. That's neat. Huh. <laughs> it's portraits when they talk. Now that's... You didn't need to do that, but you did it anyways, and I kind of love it. That is some quality shit. That's some quality of life shit. We increasingly... We inc yeah, yeah, no, I've already read all this, but... Uh huh. Some of these are not the same quality, though, so that's going to bother me for a little bit. I... Fucking... I'm very concerned about this, but um, we'll deal with that in a moment. Okay. Are you prepared? Ah, uh, I don't see why not. Ivala's pillar. We're almost entirely ready. The goddesses just need to provide divine power. Everything checked thoroughly? Yes, this, though this spell was much simpler, it simply pierces the defenses to my father's prison. Or, yes, though this spell was much simpler. It simply pierces the defenses to my father's prison. I've added my power. You and Mythen are like the only two that do things. God, I wish Mythen was the only god that did things. As have I. It's wonderful to be working together again, sister. I agree, Mythen. I'm glad to see you recovering so well. Even though she's had, like, less than a day to do it. Now, are you older than the over uh, than the supposed over-god, is the question. Tosha, we need your help as well. I'm afraid she does this at times, I guess not. When she drifts away, there's not much that can be done to bring her back. Despite everything done to Avala and Zelika, our sister has essentially ignored their plight. There will be no help from her. I suppose there's nothing we can do. The spells still work with the two of you here. What about the rest of us? If we can't help with the spell, what are the chances we'll need to fight? The prison doesn't appear to have guards. Entity with Entities within couldn't survive in the real world, but we may need to fight them to rescue Simon. How likely are we to be attacked by the one imprisoning him? How likely are you to be attacked by him? Is the, bigger, is the better question. We could go ignored, or we could be in for the fight of our lives. That's one of the reasons we need everyone ready. Wendis is lurking in the tower nearby to retaliate if they attack, which would buy us time. I believe that neither is likely to target us, as they require too much of their strength for their primary rival. 
At the moment, they're doing battle for control of reality, so they rightly view this as a sideshow. There's another potential issue that we need to take seriously. Simon himself. Oh, is Yara actually going to bring that up? Yeah, if our analysis of the spell's correct, Simon's experienced what may be centuries of torture and isolation. I can tell you that he survived it, but I don't know his present condition. I don't believe it would be it would have broken him, but his shard must be driving him mad with lust. Right, I should probably... Eh, the whatever whatever artwork I currently have up as the screen cover will do. It's I think it's still the on the on break one, but I don't care. Simon's willpower will have been deprived. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Simon's willpower will have been exhausted by years of deprivation, so when he sees us... Anyone who doesn't like the idea of rough sex, I honestly suggest you retreat. Let us help him work out his lust. Let us help him work out his lust. It necessary, yes, but I'm not sure it's even a good idea for the succubi- for, for non-goddesses to be here, quite frankly. That includes the succubi, especially, because, um, we already found out that it might be extreme, but there is, in fact, a limit to how much a succubi can take before they shatter. I think any non-goddesses should, uh, non-goddesses or Esthera should fuck off. <laughs> succubi first, then? I think goddesses and Esthera first. I think the succubi need to leave until they've dealt with him. Anyone's, anyone who's into the idea, anyways. Totally into it. I'll bang as long as I can. I do not think... I, this. You're not thinking it through. Gumdum wants to help the... Si okay, you might be a special case. You might be a special case, but... Just because you're kind of going... Crazier by the minute... We'll be the first wave, but it's a safe bet Simon will exhaust all of us and want more. Up second, those of us with supernaturally tough bodies or tower-based strength. I reverse that order. So like me, I'll do my best. Thanks, Sokka. Now the third wave's where things get dicey. Hopefully we'll have taken the edge off. So next is anyone who doesn't mind rough sex. Hell, I could go into one of the earlier waves. I don't mind some pain. Trin! This is not the same. Guess I'll help out there. Uh, what if he goes through all of you? Then you're... I was gonna say metaphorically screwed, but, um, metaphorically and quite literally. I'm not sure. I hope by then the succubi will be up for another round. Yeah, we're not, like, getting the goddesses involved in this? Like... Should they not be first? Because it seems like... I mean, whatever. I don't think any of the succubi should touch him until the three goddesses standing here deal with the worst of it. I don't want you to be hurt in any way, Lenine. Maybe you'd better stay back. I don't believe Simon would really hurt me, but the idea of him without self-control is scary. In any case, that's our battle plan. At least someone is in fact planning to, in a way, subdue Simon. Just remember we're fighting with Simon here, not against him. Riala, I will hand over the work to you and then depart. Of course, I understand completely. Yeah, I don't think your body could take it right now. Alright, let's break open this prison. Unlike other magical portals, this gate wavered into existence and emanated into a cold mist. Akka stood nervously near the middle of the group, a dagger in one hand, but her other holding her heart. She still couldn't see through the gate, but she could imagine Simon exploding through it, snarling it with an animal lust, and she wasn't sure how she felt about that idea. Don't be nervous, Akka. Yara slid up behind her, the succubus bre breasts pressing into her back. It'll still be Simon. He'll just need us more than he's ever needed us before. I know, I just- Hey! Aka pulled away Yara's groping hands. We might have to fight! 
That's why I'm getting ready. Yara kept squeezing against Akka, a hand slipping down between her own thighs. There's gonna be a lot of lust one way or another. Though Akka squirmed away, talking to Yara made her feel more normal again. She tried to ready herself for what she could see on the other side. She could see a glowing circle within the haze now. The mist beginning to clear away enough to see the other side. A piece of bloody metal fell from the portal along with the mist. Everyone stared at it as it struck the ground. It had begun to dissolve even as it rattled on the stone. Akka strained her eyes to look deeper into the mist, making out what appeared to be a battlefield. Just to pause for a sec, does that mean the main menu is the prison? Like, the artwork on the main menu, is that actually the inside of the prison? Because that would explain the field of corpses. Because, it, it, quite frankly, it's either... That suggests the main menu art, and I, yeah, I know I'm interrupting the story. Fuck you. Um, the main menu is either the inside of the Incubus prison with the last man standing there being Simon himself or Riala on a slow Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> torn dirt, fallen weapons, dead beasts. I should have just read a little bit further. It is definitely the main menu's artwork. Akka pulled her gaze higher, spotting flames in the distance. The black smoke floated skyward, but also joined with the mist, together forming a dead haze that took the place of the sky. She could see mountains beyond, but they seemed to stretch far into the distance. Beneath them, the mist curling around his legs stood a man. He turned as slowly as if the weight of the world bore down on his shoulders and looked at them. I was absolutely correct! It was... I apparently... I'm glad I actually worked that out myself before the game revealed that to me. That's really cool. In fact, just taking a screenshot of that. Simon? Are, are you all real? Oh, Simon, you look like you've suffered so much. Please come out of there. I don't want to hope again, but... You look, if not well, then not destroyed. Are you overwhelmed by lust? We're ready to help you, but please be gentle. I don't. There's no real lust. Damn. I don't really want to make a joke here, but, um... So, don't take this as that. Where is Simon's fucking lantern ring after that shit. Put this man in the core. He fucking... Oh my god. <laughs> I fucking love demon face, Yara. Put so much work into that battle orgy plan, and you're just fine, not horny at all? I'm just as surprised as you are, actually. I'm not sure how much I can feel at all anymore. Yeah, that, uh, that's a tone setter. Oh, Simon, what's been done to you? Simon? Wendis? Physically, he's fine, but the prison's taken an immense toll on his mind. Would healing help, or... Cumdum does not think there are easy healings. Simon, focus on us. This is real. You escaped. Just... Seen so many delusions. Caught so many phantoms. 
Yeah, but, you know, if nothing else, Tanarok was definitely wrong. Because everyone was saying the lust had consume you, but the oppo damn near the opposite seems to have happened. I feel your shards. In fact, I feel more than before, but they feel inert. Did you finish neutralizing their natures? I did at first. It took perhaps a decade. I thought the power would let me escape. But even without the shards lost, it got worse. I thought I would die, then now I feel I then now I feel I just feel hollow. How long has it been? What's happened? It's been like twelve hours, maybe. Here's what's going to happen. Some of us will help you recover and catch you up on events. The rest will prepare for the next step. Simon, come dump is real and loves you very much. Hume? Looks like they didn't target us, but they're close to frightening amounts of power, and that's coming from me. I think Simon will be all right. He just needs time. Meanwhile, we need to make preparations for an attack in the tower. We have many resources available, but you'll need to guide us regarding these recent shifts. What's the plan for Simon's recovery? First, he needs time just to be reassured about the stability of his reality. I think Hume has the right idea there. After that, I have in mind successive steps helping him get back up to speed. I know his lust took a hit, but it should be more powerful than before once it's reawakened, right? That's really not the concern right now, Yara. Yes, but I don't think we should begin there. Discussing the current political landscape with him might be more important. Of course, Avala has a great deal to say to him. Who I assume has a plan for his recovery, because she's been silent this whole time. You put him through this. We should discuss higher matters of destiny, the tower and so on. After that, it might be best to let Miguel and Iris discuss matters of economic and administrative policy. Uh, that should take half a day or so. Yara? Yara, I love you, but, like... You can look a little... You can... For now, you can at least pretend to be a little less disappointed. Then we should probably spend three days rearranging the... That's enough out of you! Truthfully, we should let Simon guide his own recovery. All we can do is offer what we have to make his existence seem normal again. Okay. As Yara watched the others embrace Simon, she clung to the connection between them. For so long, her bond to her Incubus King had been deadened by the prison. So long. It's been like a day out here. As far as I understand it. Like, if it's been a little bit more time out in the real world than that, then, like, that needs to be made a little bit more clear. But I'm not even sure it's been a full day. Like, because all of this happened pretty one after the other in the aftermath of uh, the battle, and, like, the whole reason Sabatha couldn't do shit this entire time was because she was saving one fucking airship. That kind of implies... That kind of implies that this is... It has... Maybe been a day. So if that's not the case, that needs cleared up. I know for Simon it's been... But time works differently in that space. But now... She could feel the ties to him, yet where she should have felt his warm regard and hot lust, she felt almost nothing. Hume had hugged him first, and she quickly had been joined by Karina and Uyaya, yet the healing energy they poured into him seemed to pass through. Simon pulled Hume against his body with desperate strength, not desire. His eyes flicked between everyone without blinking, slightly too wide, as if he was afraid they'd disappear the moment he looked away. Gradually, the desperation seemed to fade, and Simon managed to focus on them one at a time. Each person he pulled to himself as hard as if he could draw as hard as if he could draw them into his body. Yara was glad to see the relief slowly growing in his expression, yet she couldn't feel any desire from him. 
he was shockingly unguarded in the middle of that embrace, so her senses could easily feel his body. His cock, normally at least firm at all times, remained limp in his pants. The shivers she could feel going through his body were the beginning of sobs, not desire. Whereas lust should have been, she felt only a smooth hollowness unlike anything she'd felt before. As soon as there was an opening, Yara pushed her way in. She wrapped her arms around Simon's shoulders and drew his head to her breast, not to try to draw out his lust, but because she understood that he needed comfort. She felt his body relax and stroked his hair, easing him into a more comfortable position as the others closed in around him. Whatever happened to him, he was her Incubus King, and she would be there for him. He's getting some sleep. Are we going to have a plan when he wakes up? Between Simon and the goddesses, we should be able to pierce deeper into the tower, but as for the rest of the world... The incident surrounding the Crystal of Aval is pure confusion. Yeah, um... We left Sarai in the middle of hostile territory, and I really hate that. I don't know what could what we, that we could have done better, but it'll still cast a shadow on our reputation. Fuck them. They declared war on us. So all this, is the Doom King going to survive it? Remarkably, I think so. So many believe in the good we've done that they don't want to believe we could really be responsible. That's better than I expected, but it might not even matter if our enemies alter reality itself. True. But okay, I, I, I see the trigger again. Simon can help us get through this. He has to. We just need to stay focused and help him. My lord, would you like us to help you clean up? Would you like a shave? Gum Dum thinks the beardly beard is not bad. I think I need a change to help put it behind me. A separation between myself and eons in that prison. Despite all our skills, I'm not sure anyone in the harem's really an expert with male hair. Most of us can cut for women, but that said, we do have skilled orc barbers. Or succubi if you'd prefer women. I think I could transform myself, but no, an orc bar barber sounds grounding in a different way. Is Orson about to give you a haircut? Betsy cut! <laughs> Betsy hair! Do best Betsy hair for dog eye! <laughs> hair is not funny! Hair is very fancy! I like this orc. My hair is like the one thing I take pride in. There. How does that look? Yay! It is the Simon and also the Simon's extra hair. I didn't mind the beard, but it's good to see you looking like yourself again. It does look subtly different, but it's been a month since I've played, so I can't quite tell. I feel more like myself, too. Simon's extra hair is the only non-yummy part of Simon. Hume, <laughs> don't eat that! <laughs> but there isn't time for this, is there? We need to gather everyone, do something before it's too late. Are you still level drained? Probably. I'll summon everyone right away, my lord. Everyone, I desperately want to spend more time with you, but time is what we don't have. We haven't even spoken with the goddesses. Yeah, they've remained oddly silent. Well, some of you have, but I... Simon. No, there's something I need to say. I can't say how proud I am of all of you for taking care of everything while I was gone so long. Well, for you, it was a while. For them, it wasn't. Again, and if it was, like that needs to be made a lot more clear because, again, to my perspective, it's been a day... Like, you were in that prison maybe a day in the real world. Well, not so long, but I feel that I've lost my grip on everything that was happening out here. Please listen to what Riala and Zestris have to say. You were able to talk to Zestris and not kill her? Interesting. Xerxes is very close to his objective. He would have re already reached it if not for his rival. We've confirmed everything Zestris told us, as well as triple-check the spells involved. It's a matter of piercing the tower to fight those currently in it. I know something of their strength. We'll be outmatched and potentially in for the fight of our lives. But this will be our only chance to stop one of them from seizing control of reality. 
Is it true what everyone's been saying? Hester is really behind sealing of Alla? There's so much we need to discuss, but just so little time. I don't know. I can only guess about why they've made these decisions, but perhaps we'll soon find out. You have an army of Nis. Photo negative succubi. Imps versus chosen and angel. So Hester was the chosen. Eh. Given how well she's played it so far, that actually is a little surprising. Only because um, the chosen are so fucking incompetent. Those spirits are novel. Artificial angelic beings of a sort. I was familiar with your chosen projects, but those are new. They're a relatively recent addition to the plan. I didn't develop the magic until I observed all the twisting of physical essences during the Third Arclentium War. And I wasn't paying enough attention because of all the similar mundane work. Clever. I predicted you might have facsimile Incubus Kings, but the Succubi are a surprise. Yeah, they're new to me too. Actually, an old project in my case, succubus-style servants without the weaknesses of flesh or ethical concerns over controlling free beings. That's a trick I haven't learned. Maybe I could have been kinder to all the poor chosen fools. As fun as it might be to speak to you, Simon's coming and he'll arrive before we can resolve our battle. If you think I'm letting you through that door, you're much mistaken. I don't think you have another trick for him up your sleeve. He may not be our equal, but he's too strong to easily eliminate. Therefore, you're thinking he could tip the balance? I agree. I don't want to put him in that position. What if we briefly defer our battle? You're seriously going to lock hands to kick to continue kicking my ass? Oh, you know what? I will run the ones with you right now. Pass through the door together. We can fight over the furthest reaches of the tower on the other side, free from interference. Turn my back to you and open the possibility for manipulation and transit. How trusting do you think I am? Not at all. Trust in my self-interest. I don't want centuries of work to be undermined by a lesser opponent playing us against one another. I have only guesses about your final intentions, but I suppose I would prefer your victory over any other... You're the only one allowed to beat me. What have you fucked before? I feel the same way. You like like is this an ex is this an ex lover spat? I feel the same way. You've been a worthy opponent, both eluding me and managing to develop such re I was mocking them, but this might be an ex lover spat. Aren't I a little young for you? <laughs> okay, that was funny. Well, I think most of us stop growing up fairly easily. So a truce. Let we move all our forces through the last door, then we don't begin fighting on the other side until we've completely sealed it off. That seems reasonable. We could resolve our conflict over fate on our own, well before anyone else can even catch up. The temptation to strike at the greater foe, meanwhile... If either of us held that intention, it would prevent an agreement and weaken our position severely. I believe we're more rational than that. If we were the sort of people who would take that risk, we never would have reached this point. Yeah, I really... I'm... There's something a little bit more than respect here, and it's disgusting. We're out of time. He's here. Let's begin with a barrier, then. Damn it. We can't get through. We can try to unweave it, but the power and complexity are both overwhelming. Huh. No attempt to strike me at all during the process. I meant what I said. If I'm to be defeated, it'll be by your vision for the world, not by some upstart. Just... Fuck already! Jesus Christ! Then let's get through the door before something else can go wrong. They are literally doing that. You're the only one worthy of beating me. 
this is some creepy lovers quarrel. Stop. Why are you waging this war to upend reality? Can't we negotiate this? I don't think our goals are reconcilable, but perhaps we will. But not with you, Simon. In the end, you're not so different from every Incubus King who came before you. Fucking how? I survived the prison you said to destroy me. You must be able to feel my essence now. Don't let him distract you. He has a large number of allies likely moving into position. You're right. Let's hurry through. Crumble. Crumble! I'm sorry, Simon, but you're not going to be able to break through. Here we are. Finally. No. Hello, Grandpa. Alanon? What do you think you can do, old man? I can seize one moment. This world is a pathetic joke, and here you are thinking you just need to change the punchline. Alanon, don't interfere. You don't know what you're playing with. I think he understands better than you do. I may not have entrenched myself in this world's dichotomy to the extent you have, but you're mistaken if you think I have nothing. If you truly oppose this world's systems, then you might be interested in... No. Look at you two, unconsciously repeating the binary that this world loves so much. It doesn't matter how ironically you hold those powers, you'll only perpetuate them. I can guess at your solutions, and they're even crueler jokes. You can't believe you can persuade us. What do you hope to accomplish throwing your life away to hold us off for what? A few days? No. One moment. I don't intend to wage war. I intend to burn away all the power I've ever accumulated in one final joke of my own. Grandpa! For one undeniable moment, the world will have no choice but to acknowledge how foolish this pablum of lust and purity really is. For one solitary moment, I will live in a reality not twisted towards absurdity. For one last moment, you will see the world as I do. How? Hurry, unite our- Enough! Of course, I don't really believe that you have a solution either. Did he just... He was saying one moment. I'm, before he says anything further, I'm gonna guess he just time-stopped that space. That is going to be where I... Where, my money's gonna be on that for now. I'm gonna let him cook, though. But you're better suited to this world. After so long with your future steps set by the path of others, your choices may be able to change what will be. Perhaps you can help all those I'm leaving behind. Eleanor I... Perhaps in another life I could have been a good king. I wanted, but I suppose I don't want anything anymore. Or he might have drawn them into a pocket dimension and time-stopped it. What just? The barrier's gone, but what about the door? Gone. Xerxes and Hester had forged a path deep into the tower, but now... Alanon seized all that power, twisting it into a labyrinth of untold proportions. I think they were pulled in, but that can't have imprisoned them. No, I believe their objective is still attainable. It's just incredibly obscured. He threw them into an incubus ask <laughs> into his own version into his own version of the incubus prison effectively. Okay. About the same. It's close enough to my guess, but it does mean we don't have infinity time to build up power to fight them, but we have time to build up power to fight them now. Given time to work, we should be able to follow them. They likely can't reach their goal quickly, but I don't know how long. So in the end, he gave his life to buy us time. Are we sure he's really dead? I mean, that was pretty heady magic. Sad King turned himself into pretties and then used up all the pretties. Cum Dump's very confused and sometimes sad, but it's not an awful sad, and Cum Dump is confused. Confused doesn't cut it! That moment... That was fucking awful! I wasn't horny at all! Nalili... 
I thought I would I thought it would feel a bit shy like most like most humans, but that was truly different. I don't really know how to feel. Perhaps he attained what he desired. He made us all understand how he felt about the world. Can't help but feel primarily sorrow for him. I don't, but it's because I understand his position, but, like, all, he did nothing to make the world, he gave up on the world rather than do anything to make it more comfortable for himself. Simon's existence is what seems to have spurred him into some form of action instead of the sedentary waiting for death thing that he's been doing his whole damn life. I wasn't entirely wrong when saying he had access to the world editor, but, like, I wasn't completely correct either. I, I wasn't wrong is the best that can be said about that. I felt very little, but I must wonder what impact this will have on Succubi around the world. Oh, did he do that to the... Oh, he made the whole world feel... Okay. Do we still have time to worry about them, or are we still rushing? No, we have time. We need to use it. We can't fight them. You saw their strength. I saw them combine their efforts to make a barrier, but that's it. We need to prepare and follow them. By the time we enter the deepest tower, we need to change the equation somehow. I agree that we probably have enough time, but I'm more concerned about whether we can ever equal them. I don't know. Seems daunting, but... As usual, there's nothing to do but get back to work. Okay, now what? Why is there a tent in here? How are you feeling, beloved? Wait, where's my teleport back to the... Alright. I want to get started. Where's everyone? You've given enough instructions. I know you slept, but you need other kinds of rest. If only. There's so much to do. So many critical loose ends from the war. I know. I wish I could keep you here for a year and tend to you, but we don't have that much time. In the meantime, I summoned the goddesses and several key allies so you can speak with them. Why did we put off talking to Avala for so damn long? And yes, I know how that sounds. Not at the base? What'd Riala say? They're incorporating tower fragments from the goddesses, but doing so while maintaining the defenses is a very difficult process. Then I suppose this is the best place for now. Thank you for everything, Janine. All I did was clear up the area and send a few messages, but I'm glad to hear you say that. You'll get through this, beloved. I know you will. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. Okay, what's with the tent? Pilstara, why is there a tent in here? Is something wrong? Nothing aside from our overall dilemma. I don't have anything new for you either. I just wanted to say that we've set up a place for you to relax. Nothing complex, nothing sexual, like the old break tents on campaign. It's been a long time in more than one way. I'm glad there was some disagreement about what you would find most restful. Some of the others really do need to speak with you, but once you're done, come back to me and you can rest. Ah, okay, so that's the move on. I still don't get why tent. Hi. Simon, I've been doing some inventory, or is that not what you'd like to discuss right now? Honestly, I wouldn't mind some inventory. Well, I'm afraid I mostly finished, but there's an oddity. The majority of what you had in prison, in prison evaporated. The major said it wasn't substantial enough to survive the real world. I suspected something like that, but only the majority. These two swords came with you. Any idea what they might be? I believe they're fragments of real power caught up in the prison, not figments created by it. I'll have to see what, it, what we can do with it then. Thanks for taking care of everything, Miguel. Of course. Okay, my power's back. But really? Hold on, I need to... Interesting. So... She said two swords. You'd think the blade would be a dick, but instead the hilt is all dicks. This is much worse. <laughs> she said two swords. I only picked up the one. Oh, oh wait, the, the Empress blade as well. Or is that equipped? I'd have to check. Balia, I wanted to ask if you were well. I am uninjured. It was only a copy for a deception. You should know this. But I can imagine the entire affair being stressful for you. 
too much chaos, too many irrelevant variables. I tried to focus to help the others, but now I'm tired. Then you're fine? No, it was very obnoxious. I still don't feel like myself after being split like that. One with red hair might have had good intentions, but I don't want to deal with her anymore. Grin is usually my concern anyways. I want to have sex and do orc things. You... I will do orc things. Aww. Alright, so she at least understands, but... Yeah, no, the Blade of the Empress is gone. I will deal with you in a minute, Zestrus. I really don't want to deal with you. I really don't care what you have to say. You blew so much smoke up my ass. But... You finally did something useful in the prison. So not even directly. But it was enough that... You get one last shot to not be fucking negative D tier. Simon, this hasn't gone the way anyone hoped. Are you well? Last time I saw you, there was... I'm so sorry. Something still returns slowly to me. Tanarok intended to erase me, as I once tried to do to him. Fortunately, Wendis interrupted this process. I am unsure if I could have survived alone. I had enough trouble just clawing my way back to resolution. So, your current position... Weakened, and I fear I'm still at risk given the potency of your foes. And so, I must beg your assistance. You are the closest thing to neutrality that remains. What exactly do you need? A place to stay and shielding from all the chaotic tower forces in play. In return, I'll offer some magical assistance. I also have some ancient books that may be of interest to your mages. That is all I offer. I understand. Our mages will need to approve your work, but otherwise you're welcome. Thank you. Perhaps this won't be so bad after all. You might expect me to push you towards neutrality, but I think at this point, what's more, most important is preventing potential catastrophic changes. You aren't worried about what I might do? I hope you'll see reason. Yeah, okay, Aqua. You you are Aqua with none of the fucking humor. We should probably deal with you now. I'm glad you were able to return. It required a great deal of effort to resolve my failure. I don't view it that way. I kind of do. Clearly, Xerxes was a step ahead of everyone. If you're feeling somewhat better, I want to say I'm quite impressed you survived him in that place. He survived. He actually came away from it better than I thought. I was totally prepared for him to be like what Yara su uh, suggested. The fact that he's just broken and sad now. S broken and sadder than he was at the start of the game, I guess I should say. Um, is... I'm not sure I'd call it an improvement to what I expected, but it's... Different. If you're feeling somewhat better, uh, yeah, uh, thank you, I suppose. I'm afraid your harem doesn't entirely trust me, and with some justification, I will remain in Avala's prison and assist, and assist from there. I'm told you can draw that fragment of the tower into our defenses. We'll try to make it more livable for you. Thank you, however, I have another request. I don't want to become your lover, but I'd like to formally join your harem. What? My essence has been built to require an Incubus King, and Xerxes cutting me off hurt me deeply. You can fix both of those issues. With a non-sexual bond? Uh, yes, we've been steadily improving the process. I... I don't know if I loved the Anak. You did. Love doesn't seem like a sufficient word. He was my everything. I think it would be a terrible mistake to enter such a relationship again, so is it, is it acceptable to you to move slowly? Simon literally can't do otherwise right now, so... We don't need to do anything if you don't want. I can't say that I love you, but I do like you. You remind me a great deal of the Anok before recent years. Don't you ever say that to me again! There. I like what I know of you. I do too. She just fucked up really, really badly, and it almost cost us everything. Um, 
And, you know, I do still remember that she did, in fact, openly state she would have done this shit on purpose if she had known. I'm glad to help you for its own sake. You're very kind. Hold it, hold it. I'm all for a flexible harem, but we need to have standards. Destris, I understand that you won't be calling anyone soulmates anytime soon or throwing yourself at anyone. But does all this blushing mean that you'd like to fuck Simon sometime? Certainly not in his present condition. When he's recovered, I mean. I, yes, there might come a day when that could ease some of my pain. Good enough, you're in the harem. <laughs> oh no, you're beating all my standards. I'll just leave you to it now. He just awkwardly backs out. We've been given time, but I don't know if it can possibly be enough. You know what? Get the fuck back here, Yara. Or not, I guess. Okay, like, half the people I wanted to talk to just aren't in here. What the fuck? Alright. Simon, I... I wish I could do something and help, but you don't want to talk about it, do you? I prefer to talk about the real world to put that behind me. Well, I wanted to ask about Meston, but I guess that's a bad topic. At least he was real. Then it's true that he died in the prison. He was injured and barely survived the transition. I tried to save him, but there was nothing I could do. At least he died with you instead of alone. Is, is that worth anything? I'm not sure. Death is never easy. Yeah. But you're straight, so I'm dying. Fucking. <laughs> That's just one more thing I need to shove my foot down the anox. I need to. It's just one more thing to add to the pile of reasons to jam my boot so far up the anox ass that he is. that it's sticking out of his mouth. <sighs> I guess I'd always assumed that he'd come around and join us in the end for him to just be dead. Not dead, I guess. Absorbed by Lilith? He was a fragment of Lilith all along. Yeah, but could she even get into that prison? Like, that fragment would be cut off, so that means a piece of her very well is probably dead. I'm told there's been no sign of Lilith whatsoever. She's probably furious. I don't know if she's going to be furious with the Anak, Hester, or me. Or yes. Probably yes. Is it possible we'll just never see her again? Not if I have anything to say about it. I want to ask her some questions about Meston. Agreed. Let me know if there's ever anything I can do, okay? Is there anybody down here? Wow. There are several people I would have expected to be having conversations with that just aren't here. Simon, I, I knew what I, what I wanted to ask you, but given your ordeal... I'm sorry I couldn't do more to alleviate the sexual magic around you before, but I should be able to do more now. I have no complaints about that. You were very careful not to influence me, which is what worries me now. Uh, explain. Your intention was to use your power to completely erase my sexual addiction, correct? That seemed better than the likely alternative, but I'm listening. It's true that I might have seemed silly and sex-addled, but remember that those addictions were burned into my soul over many years. There's no magic I know of that can simply change me back. What you would be doing is taking control of my soul and reshaping it as you see fit. That seemed the only way to free you. It's what I did with some of my lovers. They may have welcomed it, but I don't want to be reshaped again, even if it's for my benefit. Then... Let... Let me work through my addiction on my own terms. It would be fun for you, I promise. Please, just don't torment me about it. I accept your logic, but right now I'm so tired. I understand. The strength you gave me should be more than enough to wait, and I'd rather get to know you better. I mean, I know you pretty well with divine knowledge, but in a more personal sense. I've been too dismissive of you in the past. Vala specifically trusted me, but if you were speaking through your worshippers, you've had consistently mixed feelings. 
I don't want to think that you've come to me because I'm the only available Incubus King. Your work with my followers was the first crack in my opinion. I appreciate how much you've respected them. What exactly happens now with them? You've been preparing them for this moment for so long. I presume the worst case scenario, I'd be captive to an Incubus King who would try to use me to enslave all of them as well. So they are justifiably not going to listen to me. I've created a real problem for myself. Hmm. Your followers have never been mindless, and I think you cultivated a real relationship with them. That can change. I certainly hope so, but they have everything they need to work alone, so I'll give them space for a time. Maybe by then I'll be feeling better. I'm immensely glad to have you here, Mythen, but... I've been waiting a long time. A few more years is nothing. I would hope there can actually be a better world for my followers. All right. You have a shitload of explaining to do. This. This is not going to be fun for anybody who likes this character. My opinion on her may change over time, but consider yourself forewarned. So, I believe we need to have a long conversation about a great many topics. Yeah! You're Ivala, aren't you? The one the church worships? Only in a sense, I'm afraid a rather disappointing one. The divinity I feel in you, it's the same as the divine shards we found. Larger, but fundamentally the same. Is that all it's ever been? You're some woman with a shard who founded a church to worship you? You may have many justified complaints for me. Oh, I've got a lot to say to you, but I'm going to let you make your pitch first. But it isn't anything that shady. The story begins centuries ago, before the modern Church of Avala came into being. Does that mean the theories about the Church evolving, evolving from previous beliefs now declared heretical are correct? Only Sarai was here for this. Yet speaking of whom, I should speak to both of you at some point. Not to say more, but because I owe it to you for being unworthy of your worship. I do still want to talk, but I feel like I'm still recovering. Karina, you have been in full-blown denial about this shit. This conversation has too many potential tangents. Start at the beginning. Yes, please. That's reasonable. Some goddesses are mortal women who find a shard, the mother of the elves, for example. Uh-huh. Let's not bring up the irrelevant one. I'm not. My magic was slowly woven from the deepest magics in response to the fervent beliefs of the earliest purity religions in this era. What does that mean? You're more like a magical construct? That would track. Antiala basically was. My earliest memories are hazy, but I believe similar to how many demons I believe similar to how many demons persist, but over time as I observed huma hu humanity, I began to evolve. I believe it's fair to call me a person now, regardless of how I came into being. The fact that you can have this conversation is enough for me. I'm more concerned about your relationship with the church. Yeah, if you've been controlling the church all this time, it's hard to make any sense of it. She's been a prisoner. What do you mean? Oh, no, I'd say it's rather the opposite. Yeah, that was fucking obvious. Karina, that was that was one of the stupidest things you've ever said, given the context. I could have manifested trying to control mortals, but I saw other goddesses do this and felt it would be a mistake. The goddesses of today are those forgotten by time. Most fell in a significant war that also eliminated the previous generation of Incubus Kings. Mythin can tell you more about that time. My role in that war could easily be considered cowardice. I constructed a greater and greater construct of purity around myself. Impervious, but unable to help even Mythin, much less the mortals suffering... I'm going to let you cook for a minute. But it sounds to me like you just said you... That prison you were in, you did that shit to yourself. And the church just kind of didn't open the door afterwards. That's what it's sounding like. That better not be what you're telling me. You 
better not be telling me this entire situation is because you are a fucking dumbass. I'm gonna let you ex I'm gonna let you fucking clarify on that because I should kill you right now. But you can't have been completely powerless. The profound feeling in my heart. Yes, that was me. Why Karina specifically? Why an idiot? All my actions have been trying to nudge the destinies of the world towards a better future. I'm glad Simon also has angry eyes, but I have a feeling you weren't the one dictating church doctrine. I could appear in an undeniable blaze of glory or use magic to control the minds of followers, but if I don't... I'm afraid my voice is very quiet and easy to ignore. Despite my best efforts, corruption made its way into the church. Okay. Extrapolate on how you became a prisoner, because again... Uh, it's starting to sound like you literally did that to yourself. But you don't mean corruption in the ontological sense. No, the human definition of corruption is... The human definition of corruption is rather more useful. Because campaigns for purity can cause great suffering. I know, and I wanted to lead the church in a better direction. So when I heard your voice, or, or, or your voice urging me towards righteousness... Yes, I've never spoken to a true believer like this. Not even Sarai! She, she's a hell of a lot more qualified than Karina, if nothing else. So I can only hope you do not hate me. I still want to talk to you, but... I'm glad to know that all those moments of comfort or guidance meant something, even if it's not what I thought. For you, yes. Though I should say that mortals are entirely capable of imagining my voice or deceiving themselves about what they want anyways. Get to the part where you ended up in prison, because again... Going off of what you said, it seriously sounds like you did that to yourself. Then why did you abandon me, especially after you urged me towards Simon? That is not what I wanted, but we need to go back to explain that. Yeah, we need to talk about how Hester, about Hester in your prison. How long's it been? The Second Arclentian War exhausted me. I tried in vain to warn some about its beginnings, then straining, then strained myself trying to reduce the suffering. But the psychological so shock of the events, not to mention the arrival of a shard, made everything get out of hand. So many in the church stopped listening to me. Okay, so uh, the House of God like became the her the heretic supremes. Cool, whatever. That still doesn't explain. You have immense power and you're telling me you watched the war and only sent others to die? Oh my god, Karina actually said something useful. I'd rather not think about it like that, but I can't argue. Because that is literally what you did, but alright. But consider the alternative. What would the Incubus Emperor have done if he had felt an active divine shard? Do I even need to dignify that? The man does didn't was the one incubus king that didn't really use the tower. That's why we were able to kick the living shit out of him. He was purely physical plane of existence. I don't think he would have been able to identify anything other than you gave him a harder a, a bigger raging hard on a more raging hard on than usual. I think that's the only thing he would have been able to identify about you. The only reason he wasn't killed by others was because his shard was a lot bigger than theirs. But he had no tower presence. I shouldn't even have to dignify that this idiot should not have been a factor. But please, gaslight me about how you, you were totally justified. I can imagine the war, w the, I can imagine the war never ending. At minimum, it would have been chaotic. You're assuming that man was smart enough to identify it. 
After the previous era, I thought that a quiet time without active gods was better. Arklin had been peaceful for a long time. But now we come to my greatest failing. I didn't realize just how great the impact of the war would be on everyone in the continent. On everyone, but is this where Hester comes in? Might be where Alanon comes in, actually, because he was a hero during the war until he learned the truth of the universe, and I presume he learned it from Avala. Correct, she had never been particularly receptive to my voice, but she had always been good-hearted, a wonderful high priestess who I loved. She's been a demon made flesh since the first time I laid eyes on her. You are a horrible judge of character. This explains more and more why you chose Karina. Because she is a fucking... She is the only person that might be able to match your fucking stupidity. But when she witnessed the shard opposite mine, she recognized it in some way. Her search for magic to stop the Incubus Emperor led her to greater and greater magics. I had even considered meeting her in the tower when she got deep enough, but she focused on the concrete world and I never saw the opportunity until... Let me guess, she discovered that the heart of what she believed was just magic, nothing transcendent? I tried to explain, but I had only the truth, and the truth was not enough for her. Wah! As a high priestess who had tried to help, she was perfectly positioned to exploit my weaknesses. My fortress became a prison. You did do it to yourself! Okay. That crystal, that prison you were in, was the for- You constructed the fortress, not her. She just locked the door on you. Just what is she planning? You built your own fucking prison. All she did was flip a door lock. How'd she start draining you? How'd she start using you as a battery? Oh my god. I am actually on some level glad Simon is not me right now because I would have taken your fucking head after that. This entire situation is your fault. Quite literally. You did nothing. Just like Alanon. And that let people like that seize control. And you gave her the prison that you built for the damn thing. The you built the damn prison that she turned to You are so fucking stupid. And the worst judge of character. This is what you give me. I need more than that. Because if that's it, you're a dead woman. I will give that shard to so I will take I will take that rip that shard out of your still beaten heart and give it to someone who will use it properly. I swear to God. Style points, I'll give your shard to Sarai. Just what is she planning? Now please wait. How how does all this answer my question? Once, I could speak to anyone. I could be the voice of conscience in even the angriest and cruelest mortals. But as Hester mastered my prison and drained me, making connections became more difficult. How the fuck did she overpower you? So when you were... Like, and, and, and that's the answer. She didn't. She literally just, when you went back home after speaking to her, she just flicked the door lock. That you had installed, like she just reversed the door lock so the lock's on the outside and flicked it. You did this to yourself.
I was hoping and praying you would be different. But more and more, I am being shown Mythin and Zelika are the only people deserving of respect among you divines. You're no better than the mother. So when you were corrupted by Simon's power, our link was severed beyond my ability to recreate. Wait, if those sensations were from you, what did you mean by pushing Karina towards me? That didn't go how I wanted. And since you were already friends, I hoped I could encourage an alliance between the church between church and shard that would lead to a better future. But if you hate me for how things went, all I can do is beg your forgiveness. I regret some things, but not where I ended up. I am glad to have found this happiness. I'm relieved. My ability to sense the outside world has been diminishing so much. I'd been, I've been alone with my doubt. I suppose I shouldn't hold you back from Simon's question any longer. I need a moment to straighten my thoughts before we get into how Simon relates to any of this. I am very pissed with this goddess. Actually, the same type of degenerate animal as the mother right now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Alright. Esther was not very direct with me, but early on she believed we might work together, and from that I can guess at her plan. Work to get... Ah, yes, I can work with you by locking you away and using you as a battery. Yep, that seems cooperative. I believe that she wants to make her religion true, as true as it possibly can be in this reality. What does that mean? I disappointed her, but she still believed in the ideals of righteousness and kindness that we represented. No. Fucking wah! She wanted a version of me that matched her expectations. She's a fucking child! Oh my god. There was a time when she wanted to gain control of the deepest tower mechanisms, then merge me into them. That plan would have destroyed the me that's speaking to you. But my essence might have become an incredibly powerful goddess beyond simple control by other shards. Would that have worked? Not on its own, which is why she went back to the drawing board, but as time passed, she trusted me less and less. You were in prison the whole time. She never trusted you at all. She would not have had to lock you up. She would not have had to flip the lock on your fortress if that... Okay. You're a trusting idiot. Like, you are a trusting idiot if you believe that, if you believe any of that shit. Based on what I've seen, I believe she intended to subvert and control the anti-purity shards. But she's also tried to manipulate deep mechanisms of reality, such as time. Uh, well, I believe, I do believe Alan on beat her to the punch there. Oh dear, that sounds very dangerous. That's putting it mildly, Karina. Without question, the chance that she'll make a mistake and cause unintended consequences is reason enough to stand in her way. But she's still very pure in the sense of matching my nature. She wants to create a better world. Fuck her! Could we work with her? If she can't win if she can't win alone, would she collaborate with us to create a more stable version of her new world? After the shit she put us through no. After everything that's happened, absolutely no. Stab grandma. One that wouldn't destroy you, I hope. She's open to reason, but Simon, are you truly willing to create a world ruled by a nearly omniscient and omnipotent goddess? Yeah, like, Simon, now it's your turn to finish a fucking thought. I admit that isn't my idea of a good world, but I'm open to negotiation. Is everybody in this room on crack? 
I must agree with you. I feel safe with the omnibenevolent of all uh, having that much power, but the one we have is fallible, right? What is this obsession with God being infallible? Oh my god, I hate zealots. Definitely. I could see more than mo I could see more I can see more than mortals, or I once could, but I'm equally capable of mistakes. Yeah, as we established, you've made all of the mistakes necessary for this to even be possible right now. Well, we can't stop Hester at this moment. What else do we need to know? If Karina still needs time to think, then I believe you should gather some of the others so we can discuss destiny. Oh yes, that thing that we're trying to stab in the face. For Varya. Are you finally going to explain this destiny shit? I've been waiting. Yes, it fuck yes, thank you. Oh my god, I've wanted to deal with your problems for a very long time. I'm sorry, Varya, but I had many religious qu- I mean, I've been waiting my entire fucking life! Justifiably angry! I'm afraid I have a few answers. I have few answers that'll be new to you. Of course you- And no satisfying ones, but you will all want to listen. Oh my god. Okay, Hester and Xerxes are both seeking to gain control of an extremely powerful element of our world. Are you familiar with the concept of tower forces and rootedness? Oh my god, alright. Is this how greater power means being more embedded in the world and thus in some ways less free? Exactly, your shards grant you power but also limits you. The most potent engines of creation deep within the tower are non-sentient and in a sense powerless. But if a shard holder gains enough power and manages to nudge one of those engines, that's when the world is reshaped. Couldn't that end up disastrous? Could this mean the end of the world? It could, in theory, but I don't believe either of them has anything that drastic in mind. Until they lose! If they're locking hands to beat Simon's ass after going so far to kill the other, they are both a thousand percent the type to say, if I can't have the world, and this other person I have deemed worthy can't have the world, then there just isn't going to be a world. Wah, 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 fuck you. This better be leading up to saying that we can stab Destiny and its non-corporeal face and stop them. Sorry, I have to step in here. What exactly would it mean to destroy something as abstract as Destiny? It would mean destroying the thing that is making free will a lie. Which, admittedly, would have made this world a lot more comfortable for Alanon if he had ever bothered... Less than you think, which is likely why they both targeted this me mechanism. Mechanism, Yeah, like, it's pretty much what I just said, like, it, it, by the sounds of it. Like, I'm surprised Alanon didn't make a try for it, because again, it would have opened the door to deal with some of his issues. I think you need to discuss definitions further. You're saying that fate exists, but I don't think that means our lives are for are foreordained. That's not the sense I got. Destiny is like my exceptional luck, right? I can explain. Simon, I presume that you believe the world plays out according to physical laws, with the outcomes being the result of decisions and accidents. If the world doesn't work that way, I feel it should... Yeah, well, you getting the shard was clearly of all his plan. Unless even that was just, like, an accident. Which will make her even stupider, so I hope she at least planned you. That isn't our reality. Your decisions aren't irrelevant, but your fate is a force constantly putting its hand on the scales. That sounds about right. For example, Riala. I know you won't be offended, so I'll start with you. Riala's destiny has great strength and potential, but also pain. Her achievements are her own, but she couldn't have achieved them with a different soul. That's not surprising. We're all born with advantages and disadvantages, so it makes sense those persist into the deepest layer of reality. I get how it's kind of depressing to think you're not responsible for anything you did, though. What about me? I have a pressing question. Did my fate lead me to find the shard? Easy there, those are actually several different issues. Easy there, those are actually several different issues. Before I... Be beauty before age, I suppose. Go ahead, Akka. What? 
It's not important, not really. Actually, you're a better example than someone as unusual as Varia. It'll help explain in greater detail. Akka, you have an above average destiny, but you could think of this as potential. You could easily have wasted it all and it didn't give you your achievements. But it did give you one advantage. Your internal magic gained strength faster than average. Someone who worked equally hard with a weaker soul couldn't have kept up. That's not so bad. It sounds a bit like talent. In a sense, but it's also possible to have such a powerful negative de it, But it's also possible to have a powerful negative destiny. Such people are constantly pushed towards tragedy. That would be Simon, wouldn't it? Or sometimes you're like me. Really lucky means really fucked over. <laughs> by staying alive in situations that would, uh, would have and should have killed anybody else. All right. Go on. The system of destiny is completely indifferent to what you actually care about, yet it shapes your lives. It shouldn't. The world is unfair enough without a cosmic hand on the scales. Fuck yeah, so I say we find a stabbable part of destiny and stab it. What does my destiny say? Exceptional. You're very similar, very similarly to Riala. Did the magic hit me and not Simon because of some quirk of fate? Did this destiny include all my suffering? Sometimes life is simply random. That's not what we just established. I'm with Varya on this. We might need to stop Xerxes and Hester, but destiny can go. What about everyone else? Their souls all have destinies, right? That conversation to grow repetitive. Nearly all of you have above average to exceptional souls. Except Simon. Some have larger elements of tragedy, such as Janine, but I think you're correct in not letting the metaphysics of souls define you. Also, you're wrong. There is one that I can think of that has practically no destiny. More on that later. Riala has been very patient for an answer to her question. Thank you, Simon. Do you have some insight there, Avala? More than insight, I was the one who nudged you to find that shard. What? Everyone in this room is on fucking crack. It's not obvious that she is the reason Simon has the shard. Back then, I wasn't limited by sexual corruption, remember? You've always been one of my favorites. Wait, 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 that kind of sounds like you were playing both sides of the war, Avala. No, not like that. I had hoped Riala could eventually overthrow the Incubus Emperor and return peace. Good save. And I suppose it worked in the end. Just how much could you, have man could you manipulate? How much of our lives have you been nudging? If that's what you're thinking, I'm afraid you won't like my answers. I've always tried to help wherever I could. But it isn't manipulation. Yeah, it kind of is, though. Riala developed her own strength and determination. I just made sure the right magical current caught her gaze, so she entered the tower. That's still manipulation, because you know how they're going to respond to the things you create. I'm not going to give you a big speech. I just want you to know what you what I just want to know what you've been up to in my life. Well, the biggest one is that I brought you and Simon together. I didn't control any of it. Just made sure you met. And knew how they would respond to each other. You can't claim you're not manipulating events if you're just setting up meetings. Like you can't Pretend you haven't puppeteered some of this shit. Wait, really? You're saying that we were set up by a goddess? I had been watching both of you for some time, and I thought you'd get along. I was very glad to see I was correct. Have you been using your divine omniscience to peek on us fucking? You could have just asked, you know. I try to leave mortals their privacies, but I do see a great deal. We're all fucking voyeurs. Did you try to encourage me to get the shard to Simon too? Actually, this is where I need to make clear just how weak my influence is. Nudges are only nudges. 
I tried for years to get Riala together with Wendis and Simon. I thought the three of you might be able to end the war. Why Simon in particular? He has clearly not had a, not had a, he's clearly had what you described as a negative destiny, given how long he's fought, how old he's been, and how pathetic he was at the start of the game in terms of level versus how long he's been doing this. Even Meston has called out that he is your average grunt at the best of times. He's actually slightly below average in his combat ability. Like, so what the fuck caught your eye about Simon? I'm still waiting to hear that. I might have only made things worse. Usually I hold back more, but desperate times. We, we've been talking about it, but we've actually barely talked about Simon at all. Thank you. I have a feeling that's not accidental. You're right. What is my destiny then? Non-existent, I'm guessing. I called it nothing. Just as some souls are extremes, like Varia, every year a few children are born in the extreme middle. You're the last person who gets to call Simon mid. There's nothing on the scales for you. Nothing good, nothing bad. I would actually have expected him to have a hugely negative destiny. Get, again, because he ha hadn't grown in combat ability for like most of his damn life before the shard showed up. That's when he started getting stronger. So it's possible that Simon believed in a naturalistic, atheistic universe because that's what his soul was. I don't think that's what souls like mine experience. That's right. The vast majority of them die young. Because their souls have no weight of destiny, they're easily drawn into other events. They could be the person lost in another's tragic destiny, for example. What about the other side? Do people with glorious destinies kill off those with average or neutral fates? Yes, you understand exactly how it works. Fucking system, man. Why do you look weirdly smug about that? I always feel for those few n neutral souls, but by adulthood, essentially all of them are dead. But I survived. Is this some kind of twist of fate or... Fear? Dumb luck. By coincidence, you stayed alive and nothing altered your destiny in any way. Ever since then, I've been silently cheering for you. I put my finger on the scales by making sure you met Wendis. You just said that neutral destinies tend to die tragically in uh, because of somebody else's great destiny. So putting him in contact with a people, a bunch of people with high destinies, seems like fast tracking him to get killed. But whatever, I guess we didn't finish that thought. Without her, I would have died a meaningless death in the war, wouldn't I? Thinking about the times my magic either protected or healed you. Your strong destiny, not to mention your actual love and care, protected him, yet Simon's destiny stayed neutral. Have you been leading the conversation here all along? Wasn't my intention. I don't have the ability to manipulate stuff. Bullshit. It's not so important in the end. I wanted Simon in this position because I believed in who he was. But Simon... I hope your position as an ordinary human without fate can help you make a fairer future for the world. What effects has this actually had on my life? Meston once said something about my lack of potential being in my soul. Yes, you were a veteran of many battles, yet you saw many other warriors pass you and struggled to gain equal strength. The neutral souls I've watched have generally struggled to succeed at any one discipline for the reasons we've discussed. So instead, I wandered from discipline to discipline. Hey, jack of all trades, ma a master of none is still better than a master of one. Exactly. You never found great success, but that meant you spent your life gaining a deep understanding of many different fields. That feels too easy. I was a minor old soldier because of my soul, then I became important because of the shard. I certainly didn't mean it that way. 
then how did you mean it? Because the shard was when things actually started changing for him. You were responsible too. You rarely acted quickly enough and tended to move on when you couldn't find success. We just established that's not entirely his fault. <laughs> the other half isn't about your soul either. What you earned is truly yours. Or truly not. Same as everything else. Lives without destiny are still dominated by random chance and it doesn't really matter. Yeah, again, there is one that I can think of uh, other than Simon. But again, more on that later. Exactly what I was thinking. I agree. What matters is that we is what we can do for the world. And I believe we're in an exceptional position to make a difference. Most of the laws under, underlying our reality are arbitrary. In the end, it was one of the things that exhausted Alan on. I've told you all this so you know the stakes. Random fate is little different than from chance, but if someone controlled that system... Even if they might have benevolent motivations, we can't allow anyone to gain that much power. I'm very glad to hear you say that. I'll do everything I can to help you. Can you do something about the damage that your plan has inflicted to Simon's soul? Particularly his inability to, it, like, his fucking, um, impotence, we'll call it politely. I'm sure you have more questions. I'm sure we have, we'll have more questions for Avala, but we need time to regroup. Hey, one last destiny question. What about Hume? Does she have some sort of strange destiny? Merely an unusual mind. Not everything's about destiny. You seem rather fond of her. She was another one of my favorites. I'm glad she found someone to care for her in the end. We'll leave you to rest for now and speak more later. It's nice to be actually walking in these rooms instead of watching from a divine perspective. Uh -huh. There are still several people I wish to speak to that aren't here. So I guess we have to talk to her. Uh, we have to talk to her now. If I give my complete thoughts on you, I'm going to piss off everyone who likes this game. Hmm. Are you ready to take a break? Like, you are you just got here, so... I'm going to hope there's more to you than, what, uh, than, every, than that spiel I just heard. There has to be. Because if there's not, I should kill you. I don't know. I feel like if I fall asleep, I'll just drift away. Then are you up for discussing finances? There's a lot of concrete details to tie you down. We don't want to force it, but we would like your attention on a few things. No, that sounds like what I need. Okay. Just give me the final number. Okay, 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 okay. I assume that means this is an open world segment now. Morning, Simon. You're looking better. Feeling somewhat better as well, but there's no time to relax. Yes, but we're facing such terrible threats, it's hard to know how to even begin to fight back. I've been thinking about that. It's an uphill battle, but not an impossible one. We need powerful tower magic, but we can't rely on it. We can't find victory through that path. Sorry for listening in, but what do you mean? Our opponents have been studying the shards and advanced magic for decades, or even centuries in the case of the Anak. Oh, it might be centuries in the case of Hester, too. It's unlikely that we'll surpass their understanding and beat them at their own specialties, even though we have some advantages playing catch-up. Zestris was talking about what might be done there, but Riel and Robin weren't too optimistic. 
The tower isn't everything. The mundane world around us is the most substantial part of reality. We need to leverage the power of that world, not just its magic, but its people and its institutions. We're thinking the same thing. I have a very specific uh, thing that I got to do. We have a, There's a couple of very specific things I want to do now. I don't know how much good they'll do here, but I can request the Order of uh, Thaumaturgy to help. That might help, but we can do more. The changes we've wrought in Yillin have created new combinations that haven't existed before. You think there's some hope to be found in the new? And the old. There are fragments of fallen civilizations and shard holders that could well be of use to us. I don't know how much time Elanon bought us, but we need to use it to prepare enough for the final battle. For now, let's go back home. I do, in fact, understand. Why are you all up here? 4.5 million, and before I had 89,000, so we made 4.42 million off that. Seems okay to me. Okay. Let the games begin. Okay, so first I should see what you guys want. Simon, I've been thinking a lot about what impact I really want to have. And? Can we go back to where this all began? For us, I mean. I'll meet you there. Okay. Simon, I have a request with both personal and practical implications. Straight to business, I see. It actually began with a very abstract bit of magical research, but I pivoted in light of the coming challenges. So what is it? The Incubus Emperor's old domain has been gradually reclaimed for years, but a few locations remain tainted. Not on an obvious physical level, you understand, but he left deeper magical scars that haven't yet healed. I understand the concept, at least. You think we should do something about them. Specifically, I'd like to investigate and clear the tower space beneath the old palace. Given everything he did there, not to mention the shards used in the battle, I can imagine that being difficult. Shouldn't be a long process, but the tower magic will likely be highly potent and dangerous. I've had this in mind as a potential project ever since the war ended, but I wasn't sure we could handle it before. Hopefully we can clear up the last vestige, then. It isn't purely psychological. Magically working against such a complex corruption should help us develop new spellcraft for the final battle. Do we need anything, then? Just our usual combat preparations. We can access it via the con. I'll keep that in mind. Bala? Simon, the request I have for you is somewhat more involved than a personal favor. I'm certainly open to hearing it. What is it? I might have been thinking, I've been thinking about legacy, what I might leave behind in the best or worst cases. I find myself thinking not just about unpeople, but unsuccubi, how our wars have led us to abandon parts of ourselves. But I understood you were completely happy with your decision. And I am, without question. But others aren't, and no unsuccubi were happy with what, with what was done to them. The current generation remembers those scars and won't repeat them, but the next, will it re recur in a thousand years? I'd like to believe the peace we might establish will be lasting, but I understand. Over centuries, the world could be entirely reorganized, and we might see new factions returning to war. Yes, and once that happens, the temptation to strip their souls to make weapons may be too great. You think we can prevent that in the future? Not exactly. I want to do more research on soul removal. Not what I expected, but go off, Chief. Maybe a slightly counterintuitive, but I think the logic's sound. Policy and peace are both fleeting, but power's inevitable. I want to research better processes that won't leave unpeople mangled or destroy unsuccubus minds. Then, if future generations reach for this weapon, they will grasp a more humane one. I respect the concept, but it's quite an endeavor. Is now the best time. Now is the only time. We have an entire generation of unpeople and unsuccubi who can contribute to the work. I don't like the way you're saying generation in relation to unsuccubi because that suggests there would be a generation two. And if there's ever a generation two, I'm destroying this whole fucking planet. 
Would it be ethical to repeat those experiments to produce more? No, I say we advance ma more. We advance now when the sacrifice is already made. Hmm. But I don't think you'd want to leave these behind as super weapons for a future age. No, I believe we should use our power to create something that explicitly isn't one, just a perfected process. On people who resist sexual magic without losing everything, and on succubi who resist anti-sexual magic. I could hope these two weapons would cancel out the need for the either, but I'm not quite that optimistic. Now that I understand you, I'm on board. It's an admirable goal. But not a simple one. If we're trying to improve the process, then it isn't simply a matter of our own expertise. I know, we'll need support from across the world, including both factions. Don't worry, if you approve of the idea, I'll do my best to set everything up myself. And go ahead, let's see if we can't pull this off. I have things partially set up, but we need to go talk to my contacts in Ardford. Should work. Where? The Holy Knight headquarters. Oh, that room has a purpose, okay. I'm glad to see all of you back safely, and Chaya's proving very helpful. How are you finding our base, Chaya? It's such a pleasure, and a war it's such a pleasant, warm place to keep a harem, and so organized. Wani puts most succubus mates to shame. Let us know if you need anything. Oh, just invite us there over to fuck her a lot, and I'll be happy. You do have an attractive unsuccubi here. Maybe I can relax now that us there is happier. Okay. 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 Our foes are not intractably nefarious. It seems to me this entire conflict could conceivably have been avoided had there been rigorous discussion. The need for armies is finally passed, though this does not obviate the need for violence. Yep, okay. Okay. Went to gathering, saw many orcs, but we bigger. Uh, do you mind if we train together? Not at all, but it seems like you have something in mind. Well, since I'm part of the harem now, I figure I should try to pick up some new tricks. But I'm not particularly used to all this, but I, uh, I'm not particularly used to all this, but I try to be a quick learner. Why me? I'm not sure I'm the best for new tricks, learning or teaching. You seem easygoing. I feel like it'd be easier to work with you then. I think I understand. But we can use this harem bond to share energy, right? Maybe I can learn to cooperate with you. Let's see what we can do. Agile guard. He'll star us synergy. Okay. Hey, Varya. Sorry, don't let me get in your way now. Just doing some training of my own. There should be plenty of room. You know, the two of us have been fighting together for a long time, but we haven't done much together. Why, Varya? How forward of you. Hey, now, keep your armor on. Time enough for that later. I was just thinking maybe we could work together more. I'm always relying on people like you to defend me, after all. Well, I have a few ideas of how you could do all those cuts from a safer position. Defensive frenzy. They didn't even bang. Why get all sweaty with the se with sexy harem training together if you're not going to bang? Altina, I was thinking about what you said, and I think I have a suggestion for you. What is it? Many mages aren't proficient with poison magic, but you are. I think those techniques could be magnified. I'm so much stronger than before. I can imagine expanding them, but it would cause so much damage to everything nearby. Ordinarily, yes, but there are many techniques for corruption magic that help control the secondary effects. It sounds very promising. I'll do my best. Poison Storm. Riala Synergy. This is wonderful. Thank you, Riala. You're quite welcome. I'd enjoy casting storms together. Well, that would have been useful in the Elven segment. Savala, I've been thinking, why did all these synergies just appear? I've been thinking that your anti-sexual magic is kind of like a, is like a kind of sexual magic. I hope this isn't a roundabout way to try to proposition me. Not at all. Succubus is honor. Is that a thing? It's a much sexier type of honor. But really, this is about combat. I, I don't want to feel like we're working at odds when we're fighting together. I'm open to that. Did you have something in mind? I figured out how to channel other types of magic in a whip. Maybe I can do anti-sexual magic too. Just, you know, don't get any on me. This seems like it could be an interesting challenge. Pure whip. 
flawless energy, so she's useful in that. Okay. Hello there. Hello yourself. If you wanted a drink, I'm guessing you wouldn't approach me in the training courtyard, so what is it? I just wanted to say I like how even though you've dedicated to the, you're dedicated to the way of steel, you haven't completely forsaken magical paths. Well, early on, I knew I didn't have magical oomph to be a mage, but I figured with what little magic I have should be useful for something. Surprised to hear you say that, though. I feel pretty inept compared to everyone in the harem. Not at all. Most warriors can't offer any support, but you help encourage us or keep the battle line together. And actually, I think you might be able to help me. You see, I'm always focused on invocation, not the physical reinforcement that warriors specialize in. Didn't expect this to go there. Will our magic be, uh, compatible? I think it might. I hope you won't be insulted when I say we're both old souls. I'll take that from you and no one else. Alright, let's see what we can do. Riala learned Inspire, Hilstara Synergy. Hilstara learned Arcane Shield Wall, Riala Synergy. Okay. That went better than I expected. I'm surprised I could help you with anything. Always good to have another option in combat. I'll help you with that spell if we're ever fighting together. Now you sure you wouldn't want to drink in a little more? Oh, most definitely. Okay. Verily, was was a, a quest well worth the, the questing. All looked upon me and their jaws dropped in wonder. Okay. You'll end at peace now. I find it more rewarding to join you here. Okay. I will deal with you in a sec. Sometimes I can't believe the sorts of things that come out of my mouth. What about the things that go into your mouth? Oh, I can believe those. Wait, what? We're finally within stabbing distance of destiny. We can't let up now. Okay. You. Still at 99. You're still at 99, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Sometimes I wonder whether doubt was better than all these answers. Simon, when you have a moment, could you meet me in the Steinford slums? I'm working on something. Why did your harem quest trigger here? I'm assuming that's what that is. No, she's telling me where to go to start it. Got it. I'm curious about something. Yeah, I, I thought so. Yeah, I, I thought so. I thought it weird that, that that menu option was there still. But I had to test it. I feel like I've lost my grip on something within me, yet it's swelling every day. With every day. You know that's not what this is! I wanted to have another conversation on the side of... Okay. I guess we're just not talking with her about what... You, whatever you wanted to say to her in the... Alright. This is it. I feel like if we're not all prepared, there's no way we can make it through. Okay, then. Okay. I hope that was the last time I need to pilot the Doom King armor. I'm very concerned. Technically, these are for Orissa, but we'll definitely get our hands on them eventually. Icon. I'm sorry I wasn't able to do more to assist. Hopefully, we'll return to a time of diplomacy. Okay. Clearly, we need to take care of the Mother of the Elves permanently. Yes! Yes, we do! <laughs> You may proceed with your regular activities as if I am not present. Okay, then. Ninety-nine cohesion sixty-three. I was too distracted by you during the war. Keep yourself safe next time, and I'll give it my full power. I still want to know what the fuck she was doing with the ribbon. Or was that literally just extra RP and cohesion and didn't actually mean anything? I don't know, that seems... I'll deal with you in a minute. You need happiness from the Simon. There was too much distracting magic. They actually listened to me, I can hardly believe it. I feel I underperformed in the war, but I'll be more prepared for the final battle. 
we're running around talking to other people. Simon, I have an idea to improve our efficiency on Thanor's. What's that? You may recall a masked thief who has on rare occasions caused trouble for us. I asked Phileal and some others, and it turns out this thief has been a problem on the continent for a long time. They're quite skilled. I think we should investigate them. We'd remove a thorn from Thanor's and maybe even gain an ally. Seems like a good idea, provided you have a lead. Oh, do I? I have the perfect scheme to pull on Simon. And you're just announcing that to us? Why us in particular? Yes, Come Dump is not good at schemingly thinking. No, it's because you two have been with me from the beginning. This is harem business, so I wanted to ask you first. Now, the harem is coming along beautifully, no doubt about that, but I miss the old days when I could hand Simon someone on a platter. Did that happen all that often, though? I would dream about it all... I would dream about... I could dream about it, all right? And it worked in some cases. We were able to just go pick up Kume and Balio. Come Dump could go away and have Simon find her again. <laughs> That's very cute, Kume, but not quite what I meant. <laughs> I want to find someone amazing and hot and talented. Someone we can recruit and then have jump Simon's bones. Uh, Come Dump knows many pretty ladies, but that is a hard question. There's no question that Simon could have hundreds of succubi or other women. I want to gift him someone special. I can't believe I'm supporting this, but what about that legendary thief on Thanor's? Ooh, the hype with the high-pitched voice. I heard a rumor about her during the first gathering, and I bet she's hot. Just because this is happening, I'm going to say right now, because of the timing of this, I'm going to say right now, 10 to 1, it's going to be a fucking guy. Dum Dum doesn't remember. That's okay, Kume. We just need to find a way to pin down this lady thief. I guess we could ask Valil or some of our other contacts. Great, but nobody tell Simon the truth. We need to vet the thief first. And then if she's as beautiful as everything else Simon wants, and everything else Simon wants, I can present her to him all wrapped up in ri her to him all wrapped up in ribbons. Come Dump's a bit confused, but she will just not say things. <clears throat> so she will just not say things. So anyways, that's what we know. Our search begins in the capital of Genelon. Seems like a reasonable start. We'll head there when we have times. Good, good. Okay. I'm eager to improve the harem, but it seems like all sex might be at stake here. Resting is all I have in me. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it cancelled out for everyone. I feel that Zerania's fate has likely been set. I pray we've done enough. God, I hope not. How may I serve you? Seems impossible to even estimate how much is at stake. Why are you in here? Um, thinking about something, Kume? Cum Dump wants to do a thing, but it's too big for Cum Dump. But it is important, but it is not very important. But, but, but. Slow down and start at the beginning. What do you want? Cum Dump wants to do a niceness for children. Because of fightings and confusions, there are some children with nobody to help them, and this is very sad. Cum Dump wants to make a place to help them be happy, even if they have many problems. An orphanage? Yill and other nations do operate some of those, and you could help if you wanted. Uh, Cum Dump did not explain well. There are already nice people to take care of them, but Cum Dump wants to make a place for them to learn things and become nice and grow big. A school! You want to open up a school? A school. Yes, maybe that's the word. Okay. Okay. Um, Come Dump wants it to be a school for different children. Those who are very big or very smart can already find niceness, but others might be confused. I'm getting a clearer picture. We might be able to do something along those lines. Is the Simon sure? Come Dump knows that a school needs many things that Come Dump is not good at, like money things and building things, and we're all happy to help you, Kume. Why don't we talk with everyone? Did it work? Economically, yes. Kume seems to understand things can't be run according to her logic, but I'm unsure about these recruitment policies. I believe she may be seeking succubi who can't engage with the standard schooling and sexual magic, which we do already have to some degree. Hmm. Perhaps. Well, however the magic part works, the math will work out if we allow some noble students as well. The idea is viable. It wouldn't really take all that much public funding, especially since Kume seems to have in mind a small school. Cum Dum thinks it's good to have lots and lots and lots of niceness, but understands we do not have infinite niceness. 
maybe it's good to have a different kind of niceness. You're saying you want a pro you want your program not to overlap with the good works we're already doing. Yes, those are smart words for cum dumps thinkings. If we can avoid redundancy, that removes my only potential concerns about the plan. It's just a question of properly setting our scope. I think the system already works well for the academically gifted, so the question is who could be most help? We already do a reasonably good job of providing work for those with different skills. There are lots of new opportunities in business or construction, after all. I do feel there are some gaps in succubus roles, but they're mostly getting along well enough. Um, I think Hume wanted a school for those who think outside the boxes that are already well serviced. Yes, yes, Cumdump does not see any boxes, but she thinks the assignment is right. That might be possible. There are always some who are gifted but struggle to use those gifts in other systems. So you have in mind a childhood program to help them adapt to those challenges. I'm going to get in so much trouble if I say what the words on my mind. Uh, we could model it off the programs already in place across the Chalice States and Tikan. I suppose it wouldn't really require additional control since we already have so much influence on those institutions. We should keep it relative, relatively quiet so it doesn't seem like a prestige program and it can focus on those who need it. Perhaps it shouldn't be gated by testing, but rather an option that becomes available to those who need it. I still have some questions about the exact focus of this school, but it could work. Cumdum's friends are helping all the problems that were too big for Cumdum's head. But Cumdum knows that buildings require monies and workings and, um, nails. Is it too hard? The construction co cost should be trivial, especially compared to the question of staff. There must be many nice understanding people. This conversation is still going. Many nice and understanding people. Not like the harem, but... Uh, nice like the harem, but not the harem. Because we must help other people. I think we have a basic plan. Perhaps we should let Hume think more about the exact vision as it's established. It probably makes the most sense to do this in Yilin, given its central location and relative stability. We should be able to renovate unused buildings in the slums of our Yelena. Gum Dump will go there and think very hard. <laughs> okay, then. You've sent Succubus of Allens to, Ro uh, to Rodok, but the Lust Lord followers in Helvana are interested in a different mission. One of Takan's diplomats at their hall has expressed interest in selling to Rodok. Okay. Only those two. Interesting. We won't be able to withhold any assets from the coming uh, coming conflict. All in. Okay. That seems like a grueling ordeal. You owe me all kinds of crazy shit now. Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. I do have to modify something. What the fuck? Normally, you should avoid random blimps because they're likely dev features that were accidentally left in and could have unpredictable effects. But this one's intended. In version 7.5, I added a number of new techniques, not all of which you'll get automatically. This event will retroactively add those you should have gotten. Do you want to receive the new skills? Okay. Note there are also eight new synergy skills. They were not, These were not added, but can be found in the courtyard. Oh, is that why shit is in the courtyard? So that's the dev console right there, that blimp up there. I do need to change something real quick. One more down. One more trophy. I suppose I need to take you out of here because you're not actually... There you are. Why? That was very tiring. You must try to prevent such things. Wait, where's the little girl? The, uh... Fragment that I was helping wasn't, uh, didn't die doing that shit, did it?
take different forms. No longer necessary. Okay, then why are they even there? Okay. Next thing to hit. One last, well, couple of things to do still. Avala, do you need something? And you better give me a reason to give a shit. No, no, not at all. Yes, I brought my little slice of the tower here, but honestly, I've spent more than enough time there. I can understand that. You spent a long time on that little fragment. And for much of the latter part, I couldn't even see out. Only hoped that things were going well. So anyways, I'm much happier to relax here and watch what everyone else is doing. It's quite lively. Certainly. Do you want a chair or anything? Never fear, I can float. Your harem's already been quite welcoming, so you don't need to do anything. Good, because I'm not doing anything. I'm closer. The fuck? Relationship 58. Everything looks so different from this angle. Why is Wendis here? Simon, I've been at work on something. Just let me summon her. Should I be worried about the two of you plotting? Us? We could, what, would we ever do something that could possibly be considered manipulative? You don't have the right to joke with me yet. Come on, Simon. You should be thinking threesomes, not plots. Though in this case, we've been working on a magical project that should help us against our opponents. What do you have? You're familiar with the divine-seeming swords the Chosen used to wield, yes? Oh my god, are we finally getting to the point of those? Oh, I remember. I trust that you weren't actually bestowing those. No, they aren't fragments of my power, but rather applications of it, converting regular magic into divine matter. Esther wasn't the first person to do this, using Chosen to explore dangerous environments, but she did vastly increase the number of them. The important thing is that, since she, you've been collecting some of these swords, we can use the stored matter for better uses. Since we have Avala herself here, could we create more? I might discuss that with you later, but not easily. The process is destructive. But again, nothing is stopping us from using divine matter already created. It'd be irresponsible not to. It seems profitable, then. Do we have a research plan for this, or can we already choose what to create? The problem is it's hard to do experiments, since the only viable materials are irreplaceable. For that reason, I think we'd better work our way upwards carefully so nothing's wasted. I've already bestowed my blessing on Wendis, so she should be able to handle the rest of the process. All glory to Avala! What the fuck? Ha! Huh? I'm not sure the church will want to add bestower of equipment to my titles. Just let me know when you're ready to start. Well, can I melt down some of these swords? Yes? Alright, let's do some Divine Alchemy. The Dull Ring. This is a disappointment. The ring has some defensive properties, but I distilled it down... But I distilled down five whole swords, only to create this. Few great works are completed on the first try. We have more than enough to try again. The fear of this sort of thing is why I wanted to wait until I was restored. You are restored! But you're right, I've learned a lot, so I can do better next time. You are restored. What the fuck do you mean? A holy failure. Grants immunity to many status effects. Okay, then. Doesn't seem like a failure. This time I'll aim a little lower, but I won't fail. Ring of the Wind. Excellent. This one may not be overwhelming, but it has a deep affinity to win and grant great speed. Situationally useful. And even better, I'm now confident that I can make something better without screwing it up. Robin, you have something to add? I've been conducting some research alongside Wendis. I believe we've discovered a new application. She's being too modest. There's some potential even in materials. I didn't think, that, uh, even in materials, I didn't think were charged enough. Chosen often wielded swords like these, but there were other materials that seemed holy as well, right? Yes, I've been keeping some of them in case they had any divine power. Not divine, but they do have value we can extract. Sadly, I don't think we can make them to make shine use them to make shining swords, but we can make raw six, very appropriate for my other creations. That's the offer. Speak to me if you'd like to convert them. Good to know it's an option. So the shining scepters and armors are chosen styled equipment into six. 
That's good to know that we can do, though. Is there a reason not to? We have 16 Shining Swords still. Yeah, because we have the, the robes, armor, and some rods. Make something for you. All right. You kept that old ribbon I made for you over so many years. I couldn't really protect you, so I want to do better on this. But all those years are it spent bathing in your personal magic aren't for nothing. It'll make it excellent an excellent ingredient. Eldritch Ribbon. This feels quite potent. It can't protect you from everything, but it should be quite powerful. And if you're feeling kinky, maybe later we can tie the ribbon on something else. A powerful charm of twisting ribbon increases strength but not resistances. I'm not sure how I feel about that making Simon vulnerable to stuff, but... Great speed and immunity to win. Not impressed with your immature quips. What else are you going to use him for? Uh, well, I just wanted to see how many we had. We've been highly condensing the magical energy so far, but the efficiency is improving, so we should be able to create larger equipment. Does that include full armor? Our fighters can always use better defensive equipment. That might be difficult, but let me see if I can't create a shield. Shining shield. How does this look? It should serve well enough. With the experience from that, I can try to create equipment for mages and succubi too. Okay. Loses five attack, but defense gains, magic defense gains, and luck. Hmm. Interesting. Shimmers, but in an ironic sort of way that makes it much cooler. <laughs> I'm not even sure who I should give that to. I suppose that would make sense. Um... Hmm... It could be you. Magic stays the same, so I guess this goes to you. And think of anyone else that would really like Karina, maybe, but I, it, she already has the Sylvan Glove, so... Looks like we have... Enough for one more. I know we've been prioritizing equipment for fighters, but I wondered if I could create something for win. As long as it isn't a dildo, that's fine. Oh, she better not use this as a dildo. The Staff of True Necromancy. Wendis, this is fantastic. Probably too powerful to use for normal casting, but it might be able to break the theoretical limits on necromancy. That was the goal. I won't be able to use it, but you might be up to the task. I'll review all my notes and get to work. Just to be clear, you're not able to bring back the dead in a true sense. If only I had that power. No, it'll just allow combat necromancy beyond what's normally possible. I think it'll benefit us in the end, and with what I've learned from this, I should be able to take on magical equipment. Like, I know that that's wins, but... Yeah, I didn't think so. Be able to create something new. You need something? Former Hand of the Anak, Relationship 20. I fear I have no new insights to offer. So, what did that do? Interesting. Nothing. Visit Mythin in the Cloister of Magic. Why is Ulrissa in here? Simon, I am, of course, offering all the magical knowledge uh, that I think would be of use in maintaining the world balance. That is to say, not everything that you could potentially offer. Make no mistake, I think that you could potentially cause terrible outcomes as well. 
But I didn't mean it that way. The issue is that, that knowledge alone is insufficient, given the intensity of the conflict you're facing. Ah, this is a request. No more requests from you. You don't have that right. Not from me. Okay. Your mages have put together a proposal to incarnate the most powerful magic within my grasp. It won't be overwhelming, not against such opponents, but I can guarantee it won't be simply brushed aside like lesser spells. Alright, how much? Magical crystals, mana fuel, and, like all ha uh, and the like all have costs. I'll put together a complete list and let you know. We'll think about it. I'm glad this is no longer a place of fear. I hope I can regain the trust of my followers soon. Okay, so all signs point to several places, but Yillin for to knock out several people. Now, I have one thing left to do. Two things left to do. do all we can to investigate your shards. Hopefully it helps. Okay. I'll take you to the projection. So I understand that we have divine shards that we didn't need. Yes, we've broken them down into the smallest meaningful pieces that still convey immortality. Smaller than this, I suspect they would splinter, but be absorbed by the tower and eventually reform. So these shards grant immortality and divinity? Not exactly. Goddesses appear to be much more complicated than that, and any potential strength would take a long time to manifest. In the short term, they won't even meaningfully boost our strength, but eternal youth is nothing to be disregarded. Sure it is. I want to know uh, what I want to know is if these will make us divine fucks for Simon. The shards should synergize fully with his, enhancing the pleasure of both partners. And everyone can give can get divine pussies and make an immortal harem. <laughs> We shouldn't celebrate prematurely. Just how many do we have? Six, not counting the one we've been using. It might be best to keep one in reserve for we suck you by and for emergencies. Not nearly enough then. Come on, we can find more. Maybe we can chip a few off Tertia. <laughs> not likely to be possible. We'll continue our search, of course, but from what Tertia said, remaining shards may be relatively few. But we'll think of something. Can't we make people immortal via the tower or something? Difficult to say. Though uh, Aqua is not precisely forthcoming with us, I've obtained a little useful information from her regarding that. Immense longevity and immortality appear to be fundamentally different. Different. Orissa knows how to use the tower to get the former, but leaves the latter to be harmful or perhaps unethical. And immortality from the shards... She dislikes it, but I don't think it's quite the same. It's more like becoming a force of nature than locking yourself away from time. Our research will, be unque will unquestionably cover such issues eventually, but for the time being, the shards are our only viable option. Shard hunt round two. Let's go. Father, you've assembled this projection. We've assembled this projection for you alone, since this decision falls on your shoulders. It may be morbid, but it represents those of us who are currently mortal. I need to choose six. Can I wait? I would advise against it. The shards within people will be better defended and potentially some small help in a divine conflict. But you needn't decide immediately. Even I have many years left with my life extended. I'll retain the projection for you. I understand. I will decide. Wendy shouldn't fucking need one. What? I thought the whole thing was we have less of these because we used the shard to... I am misunderstanding something because she should already have one, right? Alright then. One, two, three, four, five... So we have six shards and five succubi. 
Because they do have to be the priority. They're correct on that. But I've been thinking about this for a while. Because at this point... The trap with the prison that um, with the prison that tried to drain the divine shards has been sprung. There ain't no shot they can do that little trick again, which makes these shards safe to use. Also, with what Simon has done to his, I don't think the rules about them breaking the lust shards, I believe, of all are called uh, the incubus shards. I don't think that'll apply to Simon anymore. So I think we're out of the woods on this. These are these are now safe to use. Six shards, five succubi. So I have one shard realistically right now. And I don't even think I have that if Windis needs one. Like, the first six shards kind of have to be spoken for with them. Because the succubi and then Wendis literally needs one to maintain her cohesion. I thought she already had one, but I guess not. Hmm. I need to think about this. Yeah, okay, so this is a non-choice. Right now. It's already sweet of you to offer, but I already have plenty. Do you have any thoughts about who we should grant shards first? Now you're asking the right questions, but let's be selfish and get them all. Okay, so I do have one to spare. <clears throat> okay. Okay. <sighs> so, the first five have to go to... They have to go to... My lord. No, Simon, I'm happy to serve a lord as wise as you are, but you are more than that to me. I feel the same way, Iris. I want to work with you, but I also want to be with you. If you truly wish to grant me one of our precious shards, I'll gladly accept. It, I'm giving it to all the succubi, but yeah, you definitely... You've earned this. Preserving you is simply the optimal use of resources. You always know just what to say. I had assumed that you would make the offer, but I am still grateful that you came to me. Of course, Riala, I don't want to risk losing you. After so long carefully prolonging my life by sipping from one shard, this almost feels unreal. To think that you want to give this old succubus beside you, you want this old succubus beside you to give it to me over so many others. Ah, don't do that. You deserve it more than anyone. It just makes sense to give you a shard early on. We want you to stay your sexy self. Sucky bosses, deservings of huggings and sparklies and fuckings. Yes, you're absolutely deserving of this. <laughs> also affirming, I'm glad to have you in, in, you in the same harem. And we're glad too. We need to make Simon even gladder. It, like the, these, the, the, these first five, like I got to give out to the five succubi and then I can worry about uh, all others down the line because it, they're the ones with the shortest lifespans. Ooh, really? This is the second best present you could give me. And now you can give me the best present over and over. I'm glad to have you with me, Nalili. Truth be told, I'm glad I have more time and not just for the obvious reasons. I've never wanted to rush to be someone like my mother. Eventually, I want to have the allure of a mature succubus like Rial or Yara, but I don't know if I'll get there. At times, I worried that just when I was starting to understand who I wanted to be, my life would be nearly over. Given eternity, I hope that all of us would be able to explore ourselves without hurrying. No matter how old I get, you'll always be daddy to me. <laughs> Alright, Yara. Really? You're giving me one of the first shards? As I said, I kind of have to hand these out to the succubi first. Of course, Yara. Uh, also, yeah, you've been here since the beginning. I, it, like, Akka, only Akka has been here longer than you. Of course, Yara, I want you by my side forever. I'm happy to spend forever underneath or on top of you. But this is great. It's like a childhood fantasy brought to life, only it's even more glorious than you imagined. Now we just need to find more shards so the whole harem can be together forever. Yay, cum dump gets to be Simon's cum dump forever. I'm glad you accepted so quickly. I want to keep you with me. 
Gumdump will use her long, uh, her long lifeness to help all our sexy friends get long lifeness too. I have no doubt with your help we'll be able to find more divine shards. And if we cannot find more, Cumdump will stare at the sparklies and make them create more long lifeness. <laughs> you probably could. Then everybody can be sexy friends forever. Yay! Alright, that's the succubi taken care of. I have one left. Early on, earlier on, I mentioned that there was someone else that Destiny forgot here. Someone else that has no grand fate. And I have evidence to back up this claim. Someone that, uh... Well... The only person that we that makes any sense if we're going up against an enemy like fate is the one that was so far forgotten that she's actually the only person in the game that is missable. And the only person in the game that even if you do get her, you can still lose her because of her... Uh, if you do not handle her properly immediately after attaining her. The first real shard goes to Altina. M me? Really? We're fighting fate, and if fate's forgotten about you... We just turned you into a divine counterpoint to Simon. I'm sorry that you feel the need to question it, but you shouldn't. No, I'm happy. Truly, I am. I've been through such hardship, it's difficult to believe that I will now carry a divine shard within me. You've been with me through that hardship, Simon. I look forward to being with you into the future. It is the only answer that made sense. Given our opponent... One of our opponents can control the very fabric of fate. She's the only other character that comes to mind that Destiny appears to have forgotten. Because she's missable. And even if you do get her, if you don't handle her in a very specific way, you can lose her. Like, she'll leave during the, uh, during the fucking Battle of Yillin. So, she's easy to forget. She's easy to miss entirely. And even if you don't miss her, it's really hard to get her sane. Like, it's harder to get her sane. And if you miss your window, she's gone. Someone with that, opportun that many opportunities to screw up with Yeah, fate, that's my evidence that fate forgot about her, too. And I'm going to make fate pay for that. <clears throat> that is everyone. How many shards do we actually have? So I, do I have to go to the extra? Like, I'm pretty sure that was all six. That was all six, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. My name has been Rebellions. This has been The Last Sovereign. And I'll see y'all on the next one.